Greetings, fellow explorers. In this video, we will learn how to use words of power to create changes in our physical reality. By following the guidelines presented here, you will be able to create an internal library of spells that you may use at any time. What makes incantations unique from other forms of magic is that they do not require an altar, ceremonial objects or any specific conditions. All that is required is intention, energy and of course the words themselves. So then what do we mean by words of power? Before we answer this question, we must remember that magic is a process of making intentional changes in reality. These changes do not occur spontaneously on the physical plane. Rather, these changes begin on the astral plane, where our imagination lives. Indeed, whenever we use our imagination, we are creating ripples within the astral plane. These ripples eventually reverberate into the material plane, where they manifest in our daily lives. Thus, we could say that everything starts from a place of etheric malleability and moves into a state of solid or semi-solid tangibility. How exactly do we initiate a process like this? There are infinite ways of doing so, but today we will focus on just one. Incantations, otherwise known as words of power, involve a specific formula of words and sounds which are transmitted directly to the subconscious mind. Upon receiving these signals, the subconscious mind becomes programmed according to the information encoded within the words. Once the subconscious mind is programmed in this way, it will begin to function according to that program. It will now operate automatically, creating energetic changes on the astral plane without further instructions from the magician. Let us consider an example. Imagine you must take a detour on your way to work and it leads you through a dangerous and unfamiliar part of your city. Before you go, you chant an incantation of protection. As the magician, you have either created or studied this spell and so you know its inner workings. It is designed to create a sphere of energy surrounding your aura. This shield wards off negativity, discouraging potential threats, both physical and spiritual, from targeting you. As you move from point A to point B, you feel the magic running its course. You visualize the pulsing sphere of energy radiating a white magical light that disorients and confuses negative forces. This gives you a sense of peace, stability and safety. These emotions further charge and program your subconscious mind, thus reinforcing your etheric shield in a positive feedback loop. In this example, the chanting of the incantation is what initiated this entire cascade of magical activity. The subconscious mind responded to the incantation by decoding its message and using that information to create a magical shield of energy on the astral plane. Then, the magician used their imagination and emotions to sustain and amplify the magical effects until the magician finally arrived at work. At this point, the magician would release the incantation from their mind. They would cease to visualize it and would withdraw their emotional energy from the spell. Finally, the shield would disappear. We can see how there are certain requirements that must be met to successfully cast an incantation. At a minimum, these include intention, emotion and conviction. First, the magician must visualize their intention with as much clarity and vividness as possible. When the intention is very sharp and colourful, the subconscious mind will have perfect instructions on what to create within the astral plane. Without intention, the incantation will fail. Emotion is also required. As we have discussed in previous videos, emotion is known as energy in motion. When we focus on an imaginary image or object and then begin to feel strong emotions related to that object, we are actually charging that object. The energy within our emotions is highly concentrated, 
and it uses our focused beam of conscious attention to flow into the imaginary object where it becomes stored. Without this energy, the incantation cannot activate. Finally, we arrive at conviction. Conviction is the unshakable knowledge that our spell will resolve without a doubt. It may not be the perfect spell, and we may not be the most powerful magicians, but we know for sure that the combination of intention and energy must inevitably produce results on the astral plane. Indeed, it is impossible for the spell to fail if both intention and emotion are working together towards a common goal. Thus, it is conviction that holds the spell together in one neat package from start to finish, ensuring that all energetic and mercurial fluctuations remain cohesive and synchronized. Let us now return to the words of power. We said in the beginning that an incantation is a specific formula of words and sounds. What does this mean exactly? Many occultists say that the English language is weak in comparison to the ancient languages of the world. Ancient tongues, such as Latin, Hebrew and Sanskrit, among others, originated during a time when humanity was more in touch with the primal nature of the subconscious mind. Modern languages, such as English, have moved further from the chaotic essence of the deep mind, and as such, they prefer an intellectual rather than an intuitive approach towards the description of natural phenomena. For this reason, incantations are often spoken in one of the ancient languages. By using primal tonal frequencies, the magician has a stronger impression on the subconscious mind. Indeed, a word of power is an auditory symbol. Each sound is an avatar for something that lives in the subconscious mind. Thus, the magician must package their intention within the appropriate vehicle in order to successfully transmit it to the subconscious mind. Symbols, as can be found in art, music and expression, are the appropriate vehicles. The subconscious mind is ancient, and so therefore, it prefers to receive information through abstraction rather than modern human logic. But what if you are unable or unwilling to use ancient languages? What if you are unable to find or access grimoires of incantations that incorporate primal, symbolic tongues? What if you simply prefer to work with what you have available at hand? Do not worry, fellow explorers. The English language is not totally useless in this regard. With enough imagination and emotion, the subconscious mind will be able to receive and work with your intention, regardless of the language you use. You will, however, cast more powerful spells if you can find a way to condense your own language into symbolism. For example, some magicians create incantations using rhyming or repetitive poetry. Others will write out their intention, cross out the vowels, and from the remaining consonants, create strange new words that have never been heard before. The opportunities are limitless. From the perspective of chaos magic, however, there is no one right way of crafting your personal incantations. So long as it has meaning to you, you will be able to use it as a vehicle for your magic. Regarding incantations in particular, the throat chakra is especially important. Incantations involve speaking, and thus the magician's throat chakra must be open and activated. Only then can the magician speak their truth. It is usually not necessary for an incantation to be shouted at the top of one's lungs. After all, it is not every day that we must banish demons or summon lightning from the sky. Instead, the magician must use their intuition to determine the right way of speaking. Above all, when chanting your words of power, you must feel them in your chest and throat, and they must come out of you with resonance, clarity and power. Sometimes a whisper is all it takes. Do not forget, fellow explorers, that magic takes practice. Most of us do not practice magic daily, 
and so our capacity to communicate with the unconscious mind is probably out of shape. Incantations must be memorized through repeated use. Only then will they begin to create an impression on the subconscious mind, which responds strongly to patterns. Furthermore, we must prime the invisible channels of energy that connect us to the unseen world. Just as it takes electricity a certain amount of time to pass through a wire, so too does it take magic time to cross into the astral plane. The only way to ensure a healthy flow of energy between yourself and the unseen world is to use these channels regularly and with mindful attention. Such work can be mentally exhausting, but with time, you will become more efficient in the art and science of energy manipulation, and your incantations will flow more easily and with greater strength. Remember, the subconscious mind is not to be confused with the brain itself. Rather, it is an invisible network of mental processes, information and energy fluctuations. We are all connected to this network, and we have a degree of influence over its behaviour. This network is extremely vast, ancient and primal. Unlike our conscious ego, which is very small and young in comparison, the subconscious mind is active on all planes of reality, going back to the origin of our universe and beyond, until it blends in with the mind of the Creator itself. For this reason, anything is possible. We can create whatever kind of incantations we desire and they can all be perfectly effective. And yet, we must still maintain realistic expectations. Our ability to manifest results is directly proportional to our level of consciousness. We are, after all, vessels through which the magic must operate. A chain is only as strong as its weakest link, and so therefore, we must evolve our souls before we can expect to create changes of the highest magnitude. Until next time, fellow explorers, keep practicing, remain curious, and remember to have fun. <laughs>